signs you've sold your soul and how to get it back. Hi there, welcome back to another video. My name is Melinda Lyons. I'm a psychic medium, a near-death experiencer, and a demonologist. This topic is very difficult to discuss today, so it's gonna be quite long. So if you are new to this channel, welcome. If you've seen me before, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about how you may have sold your soul and whether or not you can get your soul back. Before I continue, this video is not religious in any sort of way, nor is it based on pagan, paganistic beliefs or spiritual beliefs of any manner whatsoever. This video is not associated to that degree, nor is this video going to give you tips on how to work or to sell your soul with demons. This is not what this is at all. Me as a demonologist, my job is to help people for free where I do sessions called Paranormal Advisory, which by the way, if you are new to this channel and you are looking for paranormal help and you feel you are haunted or you have severe questions based on something of this topic, you can go to my website at lastfrontiermedium.com and contact me there in my paranormal advisory request forms. Now, when it comes down to demons, they are a complex nature. These are entities that you do not want to underestimate in any sort of circumstance. When it comes down to demons and devil entities, they take your intentions extremely seriously. Me as a demonologist and psychic medium, I've experienced demons on a very complex level in the astral realms in hell. I have actually seen and have been to hell. The information I'm telling you is not based on something I've read about. It's something I know. It's something that I've experienced myself in many, many different forms and different ways. And it's discomforting, but the information is still very, very important nonetheless. The information that I'm going to present for you based on demons and how you uh, are going to sell your soul, how you can, uh, either by accident or through intentional uh, senses, and whether or not the signs are there, what the signs are, and how to get out of it is not based on Christianity, it's not based on Catholic religion, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, or demonolatry, or anything to that matter. This is based on energetic standpoints that I have concluded and understood through many, many of my own countless paranormal advisory sessions with clients and through my own haunting experiences and from many different instances where I have seen demons in different places where I've gone to, such as hotels, restaurants, uh, other people's homes by accident without any warning whatsoever. So like I said, as I continue, the information I perceive and receive and give to you is based on personal experience. So if you are new to this information and you're not prepared and uh, certain subjects may be uncomfortable for you, I would advise you to uh, click off this video now. This video is based on for people that are in a very complex situation where they know something isn't right. They know, you know deep down that there is something that you've done that maybe you were a part of or maybe you did intentionally sell your soul and you regret it and you want to know how to get the hell out of it, literally. What are the ways that you can sell your soul? Now, selling your soul is actually very simple. You don't need a contract. You don't need uh, to physically do anything. All of that actually would be done in different realms and you would never be the wiser. You would never even remember or even recollect, recollect any of those instances or situations with demons or Satan or with other devil entities. Now again, let me rephrase this. Satan is an entity that is a devil form of an entity that is demonic and devilish by nature. But however, please understand that this is not Christian based and the reason why this is is because demons are not to be associated or identified by religion instead religion identified demons and devils now the thing is is ancient egypt talks about demons and devils hinduism talks about it uh, judaism and many many others buddhism in some sense kind of but more importantly these entities are in many forms have different names in different religions 
religions are now the same entity. So this is very, very important that you uh, realize this now, that these entities are not just Christian based. So even though I use the phrase or term or name Satan, I'm only using that based on the common denominator of what everyone will understand. And when I say devil entity, I mean that entity. But this does not mean it is only Christian based. So with that noted understanding this aspect it's very clear in my understandings that selling your soul is that simple you just can do it without any hesitation selling your soul does not require a ritual selling your soul does not require payment selling your soul does not require anything you don't need to kill a person or an animal or to do a blood sacrifice or a candle ritual or black mass or or, or whatever it is that uh, you would believe or assume or have done or have thought about doing now I'm not saying this as a person who condones owns this behavior or this choice but however I am going to say that if you've done this you've made a grave mistake imaginable and unimaginable selling your soul is the biggest mistake you will ever make in your life and in your existence and I know this from personal experience not because I sold my soul but because I've been in hell and when a person sells their soul they are then tortured for all eternity and this is not, again, Christian. There are many other religions, even ancient Egypt talks about this. Oh, one of the oldest religions, ancient Mayan, talks about heaven and hell, talks about demons, devils. It's nothing to be underestimated. They exist and they have existed for all from what we know before time on this realm has ever existed before we ever came to this planet one of the signs of how you would know that you've sold your soul is that you receive extreme lucid nightmares on a regular basis every single nearly every single night if not uh, every other night and these nightmares will be extremely lucid they will be to the point where you cannot sleep anymore because it's frightening uh you will have hot flashes you'll it you will actually feel as if there's a collar on your neck or a collar or a leash on your leg and it feels heavy you will feel weight around you you will also feel as if there is something on your back and it's latched upon your back and it's heavy as if something is latched on you these are very uh, very quick analysis that I would usually identify rather quickly during a session with a client when they are describing what they are experiencing during a haunting. Not always will these kinds of experiences uh, identify suddenly that you have sold your soul. That's not what this means. But this is the behavioral pattern that I have recognized when a person does sell their soul. Depending on how you did it, based on what it is that you wanted to do what you wanted in the selling your soul and what you promised if you did this intentionally. A lot of the times when a person sells their soul, they will typically promise that they will uh, worship this entity, whatever the entity is based on a demon or a devil entity or even fallen angels like Lucifer. And when they make this promise and they devote themselves to this uh, spirit, then they say, okay, well, if I worship you, can you please give me this in return? And typically demons and devils, when you make this deal, especially with Satan, you are not going to get what you want for free. So they are going to require your soul in exchange for what they are promised or agreed to do in exchange for you. And it's something of a big deal and it's going to be complex for them. Whether it's minimal or big really doesn't matter. They're going to require you to sell your soul. They'll uh, hint it at you. They'll even tell you, well, what am I going to get? Are you, are you going to give me anything? What, what's in it for me? They will talk to you like that because they've done that to me when I'd even ask them questions and understand their basis of how they work um, because as a demonologist I communicate with spirits at the same time as a psychic medium so when I communicate with spirits I see both departed loved ones dead people I see familiar entities that are not of this world typically entities that were never human and then on top of that I see angels I see demons and I see devils and I see many other types of entities they'll begin to describe their deal and stipulations and commands 
those demands of what they require if you make a deal with them. If you were to uh, agree to this deal, at that point, you will be required on in some dream where you're going to sign a contract. Some people describe that they signed paper with blood. Some people describe that they signed with skin and with blood and uh, with fire. Um, this is very, very common. I've actually witnessed this myself. I've seen this in different realms myself and it's horrific. It's not something to undermine. When they have you sign these contracts, you will start to experience all kinds of different shifts and changes in yourself. You will start to also experience paranormal activity on a regular basis. You will start to experience thoughts that go into your mind that seem as if they're unfamiliar to you. You will start to see things. You will swear that you keep repeating and seeing this entity in your home. And you will think, why do I keep imagining this? Or why do I keep seeing this? But the reality is you're not imagining this. They are actually physically there on the astral realm or on the earth realm in your home and they are haunting you and they are keeping an eye on you and they are watching you every step of the way they are watching everything and most importantly they are making sure that you keep to your contract agreement and if in any moment at all that you fail in any level even as so much as a centimeter that you're not keeping up with your with your bargain they will have at you quickly it's rather scary because you will start to experience burns, bruises, scratch marks. They can hurt your family. They can hurt you. They can put you in car accidents. They can give you heart attacks strokes. They can make you dizzy and faint while you're driving. They can uh, ruin your all your relationships that you've ever had. They'll even influence your animals and your pets to attack you or to attack other people you love or total strangers. These entities will follow you from then on in every single thing that you do for the rest of your life with that contract. And one of the things that a lot of people don't know is that they'll usually also require you to die earlier than you would expect because they want your soul that bad and so they will make it so that it looks like an accidental death or a natural death when in actuality they killed you because they want you to die sooner and how would you know the difference even if you died of a heart attack would you know whether or not they did that to you on purpose no, and that's how good they are at making sure that when you die, you're theirs. You're their property and you don't belong anywhere else. And what you feel about whether or not you deny it, you regret it, you change your mind, you do everything in your power to change how you feel and you will uh, try to even make a new deal. That's the other thing that a lot of people ask. Can you make a new deal to replace the old one? That depends on the deal. So if you make a deal based on you want to sell your soul in exchange for fame or money or something like that, once you re receive all the benefits of what they are giving you and you start to receive the fame and the money, usually if you end up dying and you, uh, you know, they'll ask you what, what good is your new deal now? That's typically what they'll do is they will basically screw you over. They don't want to make a new deal with you. They'll even tell you that uh, the new deal does not matter. Now, even though uh, there's a possibility that you could, the problem is, is that it's un likely that you would because they don't like to reconcile or adjust their deals previous deals they like to keep it exactly the way it was so that way they have you as soon as possible in their agreement the other aspect about demons and devils is when they make a pact with you and you sold your soul or you even agree to work with them a lot of people don't realize that these entities will also start to haunt your family and your friends at the same time and this is one of the hardest things that a lot of people don't realize the, uh, these entities will actually pretend to be your friend they will pretend that they care about you but then very very quickly they'll start attacking those that you care about and you will find that they'll start telling you that they only have the best interest for you and everyone else is an enemy that's what they'll do but what does that remind you of 
abusers. In abusive relationships, this is extremely common. This is where they isolate the victim, the person that they are in a relationship with, and they will start to make that person feel oppressed and suppressed of everything around them. And they'll isolate them so that they cannot ever escape that abusive, neglectful relationship. So in that case, in that scenario, it's no different than when dealing with demons or devils because that's exactly what the situation you would be in. One of the other signs of whether or not you sold your soul is when you start to experience as if in astral projection, uh, you're being dragged to a horrible, scary location or as if, like, as if you have chains or a collar or a leash on your body. In fact, the chains are very common for sex slavery or for other types of slavery because so, that's the reality is once you make a pact and you sell your soul to the devil uh, you do become their their slave you become similar to a labor slave a sex slave so even though in this realm it may seem like it's all great and glamorous and you start to make more money and you start to have more popularity the reality is they want you to believe that they can make that happen for you and they can but the likelihood that they will make you some big time celebrity is very very low in fact a lot of people usually believe the the conspiracy theorists always say that all these famous people sold their souls to become famous. This is not true on every single celebrity. And this is something that I have to clarify because demons and devils don't want you to get too happy. They want to isolate you like an abusive relationship because they want to manipulate your way of thinking so that way you can feel like you always need to depend on them. And then that way, when you start worshiping them, you start giving them your energy, whether you are aware of it or not, that's what you're doing because when you start meditating in, in honor of them, you start eating in honor of them you maybe even have orgies and sex or do rituals in honor of them you are actually allowing the entity to embark into your energy frequency into your aura and they are blending in with yours and what they are doing is they are sucking you dry to the point where you are so depleted now a lot of the times people may not realize this especially if they have a very hustle and bustle life and they feel like that this is normal, oh, I'm just really, really busy and that's why I'm tired and my life is so fantastic, that's why I'm tired, but that's not true at all. Demons actually will make you extremely tired because they are sucking your energy 24 seven. And what a lot of people also don't realize, which is very scary, but when you sell your soul to Satan or to a specific demon entity, they do do something similar to what's called the mark of the beast. Now, what this means is that the the entity then will put inside of your aura into your energy frequency into your astral body into your soul an actual sigil of that entity and what is going to happen is that sigil will begin to rotate and actually go inside and the reason why they do this is almost similar to like a doorway so whenever you meditate whenever you work worship this entity whenever you work with this entity or even if you regretted it but you still feel pressure in your chest it's because of especially if you lay down to sleep it's because of this sigil that is on your body now sometimes the sigil can be in different places depending on uh, what you intend it to be like especially if you have a sigil in honor of the of Satan other demons on your body so if you have tattoos on your body um, this will also uh, allow the demon and uh, other devils to partake in keeping a hold of you you for the rest of your life there's so much involved and that's kind of why I wanted to talk about this more not so much in a list but in a conversation because when demons and devils get a hold of you and do this mark of the beast it's one of those things where a lot of people don't realize it but I've seen it I've seen it with uh, Yahushua which is Jesus Christ I've seen it with Archangel Michael I've seen it with even Shiva who is a Hindu God who is benevolent learned other things with Anubis who is an Egyptian God so there are many, many gods in the course of the universe that are very aware of this and can identify these things as well. And that's kind of how I know about this too, because they've 
taught me this. But one of the things that's very scary about this is once this sigil is created within your aura, you are now losing all of your energy and the demon's energy begins to flex, literally flex in with yours and it blends in with yours to the point where you're no longer you anymore and you become them which is similar to possession. And very slowly, it's almost like you're sharing their blood, you're sharing their energy, and you start to become their puppet. And they start hanging you on a string and they can t tell you what to do. But the other reason why they do this, the mark of the beast, is because whenever other demons are around in the vicinity, wherever they are, and they see you, they will see that mark and they will know, oh, that's uh, that's a, uh, you know, Payman's property, Gushin's property, that's uh, uh, Belial's property, you know, they'll, they'll, that's Satan's property, that's Baphomet's property. They are going to know who that entity is attached to, to that human being, and they'll know, oh, I can't fuck with her because she's already touched, she's already tainted, or he's already touched, and he's already tainted, he's already uh, sold, he's already bought. They literally treat human beings like human trafficking. They treat human beings like animals. They, they, they treat human beings like cattle. You don't matter. They do not care about your feelings, about whether or not you regret what you did. They will attack you. They will do everything in their power to put fear into your consciousness, into your mind, to make you doubt your own sensibilities and abilities consciously, psychically, and emotionally, and mentally. You will not be able to even recollect what you did. You'll begin to forget things. You'll start to feel as if, oh, crap, I wasn't able to do this, and I wasn't able to do that. But at the end of the day you'll start to slowly remember and you'll think that's weird and the reason why this is is because slowly d the demon is helping you a lot of people that sell their souls and they work with demons a lot of people are under this very very widespread myth and lie that needs to be uh, noted here there is this big lie in demonolatry community in Satanism community in uh, many other levels of realms of uh, demon worship I hear this so often and one of the biggest lies that I want to debunk today is that a lot of them believe that you do not have to sell your soul to work with demons. This is bullshit. This is a lie. I have books back here that I will discuss in other videos, but I have so many books that back here based on Satanism, Luciferianism, demonolatry, uh, on demon worship, on how these people actually, these authors tell people that when you work with demons, you are not selling your soul, which is a lie. This is a lie. And what this is, is a blatant lie. And, and I want to just be real here. This is a lie either these people believe and they were told this by these demons, okay? Or they are lying to you intentionally to recruit other human slaves. And that's their job because they were told to by the bargain and the agreement with demons and devil entities. That's what they do. Demons and devils don't do anything for free. They always want something in return. They don't care about your worship. They don't care about your money. They don't care about your love because they don't have any love. They are pure apathetic beings. They do not have a sense of empathy in their core. They have nothing there. They are black holes of soulless bodies, soulless entities, even though they have souls, but they behave so so cold, so soulless, because they do not care about your feelings. They don't care about the agreement of whether or not you get what you feel you deserve in the agreement. They only care about whether or not you keep up your bargain and then they get what they receive. That's all they look at. They don't care about whether or not you feel you got screwed over or not. People don't realize that when you are worshiping demons and when you sell your soul, you are actually a puppet for recruitment. You are actually 
actually going to be told to recruit other demons, demon worshipers, other demonolatry practitioners, other Satanists, other Luciferianism, people, people that worship Lucifer. There are all kinds. There are so many. And a lot of the times these people end up getting out of it because they realize the damage that it's caused in their lives and they realize what's happened to them. They realize how foolish and how naive they were to believe for even a split second that these entities had the best interest at heart for them or their children. If you ever sold your soul and then you recruited your kids, you need to think very clearly, very carefully about what you are deciding to do. These children are exactly what they want. They want children. They want to. Why? It's similar to pedophiles. They're easy grooming. They're easy to groom and to brainwash into believing that this is totally okay. Into believing that this is what is going to save them from some horrible fate. When in actuality, hell is the horrible fate. Not Satanism being, oh, it's a uh, positive and it's past the dogma and it's and it's uh, we're we're thinking for ourselves and we're re rebelling against Christianity. No, it is exactly what is described in all of the books. Why do you think they are black and red? Because when you worship an entity th that is idolizing these colors, these colors do not represent anything that they are trying to fake and lie about. I know this because I've spoken to demons. I've been in hell. I've seen it. And what they have described to me is that black represents death and red represents blood. That's the only two things they care about. And they only care about that aspect of that repeated notion over and over because all they care about is whether or not you follow them and they can control you. That's all they care about. One of the other aspects that I have received uh, many letters about is, okay, I know I sold my soul or I feel like I sold my soul. How do I get out of it? What do I do to get out of it? Is there a way to get out? Is it too late? How do I get my kids out of it? The thing about this is there are many ways that you can get out of it, but one of the most successful ways that I always like to suggest to people is you follow your instincts and do what you feel needs to be done. One way to get out of it is you call on Archangel Michael or Archangel Gabriel or Raphael or God if you believe in God or other gods that you uh, are that you know are benevolent that aren't misunderstood demons okay let's be real there are no misunderstood demons they are all evil they're not positive they're not misunderstood they're all hateful bitches so I'm just gonna be real this is not something that you want to feel like you need to give the benefit of the doubt don't give the benefit of the doubt to these entities for one second. The reason why they look so evil, if you've seen them, is because that's the vibrational aspect of their being. When we die, we begin to look as if we vibrate in energy frequency based on our consciousness wavelength of our core. So when you see beings that are absolutely beautiful like angels and you know they are real, you know they are positive, loving, benevolent, safe and secure and kind, that is because that's their core of who they are and it's radiating off of them because the inside is what matters, not the outside. When I describe this, be very careful to understand that when people say they are misunderstood entities, they are not. They look like on the inside, on the outside. So what they look like on the outside is their core concept of them. Want to get out of it and you feel like you've brought your children into it, you feel like you've brought your friends into it, how do I get out of it? Melinda, how do I get out of selling my soul? Is there hope? Yes, absolutely. And it can actually be done overnight. It's that simple. You don't need a religious ceremony. You don't need anything big to happen. All you need to do is call on angels to help you. That's it. It's that simple. If it makes you feel better, you can go get 
a blessing at a church tell them what you did if you are comfortable with that if that's what you feel brings you peace and serenity inside of yourself and reassurance which it is high vibrational depending on the church then yes I would recommend this too and you ask them to bless you ask them to bring you back into the limelight of love and peace and harmony in benevolent energy and when you do this release that negative attachment picture the attachment cut say it out loud that you want it cut say that you want your soul saved and when you save your soul you are not doing it in a christian standpoint you are doing it in an energetic freedom you are freeing your energy soul you're freeing your being from slavery because that's what it is it is pure damnation of eternal pain and suffering people have asked me what about people that have died and they were satanists could they ever get out of it if they died what would happen to them it's complex for every situation every scenario every soul is individualized but that depends on the human that depends on the person. If they wanted to be rescued and they didn't go to hell willingly, then they would have to fight and they'd have to call on Archangel Michael immediately before they get into hell. It's a spiritual warfare that has been happening literally since the dawn of time. Since humans came to this planet, which we, I don't think any of us will ever know, because one of the reasons why I know I will never know that here is because angels have described to me that it's so complex, it's so beyond our comprehension, it would be too much for the human brain and the mind to understand. This is more, that would be more based on very ancient ascended masters. Now, when you release yourself and you've done the work and you've done prayer even if you did it in the privacy of your own home and you lit a white candle you did sage or frankincense or myrrh or or uh, you did maybe a ceremonial bath and you felt like this would cleanse your soul almost like holy water or you did other things however you did it a lot of people ask how does it feel how do you know that it worked very clear signs is do you feel peace with inside of yourself that you feel feel no harm will come to you at that point do you feel a release this actually is a very significant feeling it will almost feel as if you literally can breathe again it will actually feel as if that you are not dirty or heavy anymore because the energy can feel very very thick and murky and mucky and it can actually feel as if you can't breathe within yourself you will actually have a hard time breathing you will actually feel you cannot seem to make a lot of uh, distinct decisions on your own without feeling as if you need help from demons or devils because you become so dependent on them after you received help from benevolent entities and even priests or pastors whoever you feel that you can go to that you trust to help you be saved from this horrible torment and damnational fate is what you feel deep inside that is a very quiet very assertive calm answer that is true and if it feels like all the anxiety is gone, your fear is gone, you can sleep, you start to have very positive affirmations, you see positive numbers like 111 or 1111, you see 3333 uh, 33 on the clock, if you see things like that, and you start to also hear Archangel Michael's name, you start having dreams of positive entities, uh, or you see familiar people that are positive and loving, you start to have these affirmations in different ways uh, and even like when you're out and about and you start to have signs of weird occurrences and interactions with strangers even or animals and you feel like all of a sudden something uh, flies like maybe a feather flies on the on the roof of your car and you go huh those simple little coincidences or weird interactions or interventions from the universe are usually signs typically from the universe from these entities from benevolent beings that you are okay and you are saved and you are fine so I hope that with this in mind uh, you can breathe again and know that if you did sell your soul whatever happened to you however you did it just know that 
benevolent entities do not judge you. And more importantly, after you've been saved from this, you can also ask them to help you heal after this process because there is going to be much healing required for you to not have negative residual energy impacts that will happen after this because there will be trauma to your mindset. There'll be trauma to your emotions. You may even become very emotional and cry and have joy after being saved. After feeling uh, this, you will actually feel uh, joy. You will feel gratitude. You will feel grateful. You will start to appreciate people around you. You will just feel like everything is so much more crisp and clear to you in this moment. That's how it will feel after you've been rescued by angels. And because again, it is a spiritual warfare and not just angels will help you. There are many other beings in the other course of the universe, in the course of the universe, in the other realms that will help you. There are star seeds. There are many other types of entities. There are gods. There are goddesses that will help you. So there are all kinds of amazing beings that do not want you to be in that fate. They do not want you to to be in that situation so don't ever feel like you're going to be judged because they don't and it's just completely non-judgment because they care and all they care about is you and the love that you have within you to be resurfaced to be regenerized to, to be reignited with the purity that you've always been which is within the harmony of you but this is really all you uh, need to do if you sell your soul and it's the same thing for children it's the same thing for friends if you feel that it, it didn't work then sometimes you need to ask again but typically you only need to ask them one time and that's really all that's required so I wish you guys love and light thank you so much for watching the whole video if you did don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and notify notification bell so that way you get notified of videos that I upload every week if you are new. But if you're also concerned and you need help and you want to learn more things about demons and devils and other entities, you can get my book called Demons and Familiars, A Contemporary Guide to Demonology, available on Amazon.com uh, or you can get it at my website at lastfrontiermedium.com. But I wish you guys love and light. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.